The portal giveth and the portal taketh away. We've been telling y'all, it's time to buckle up. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. Happy Monday to all. As always, I'm Grayson Boone joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle, Kenton Gibbs. We saw over the weekend, NC state Wolfpack wide receiver, Julian Gray intends to enter the transfer portal. Now, Kenton, this is actually a name that you and I have talked quite a bit about over the past couple months. This didn't exactly come as a surprise, but nonetheless, how do you feel about the departure of Julian Gray? You know, this one, this one really like it hurts on more of a personal level, and I think it hurts the roster. Because I saw the fit and I saw the vision for Julian Gray breakout year. You know, I saw the fit and I saw the vision. And it isn't a Devin Carter situation where we waited year after year, like, all right, this is the year, this is the year, this is the year. It felt like Last year, Julian Gray showed the flashes and showed the explosiveness of like, hey, this is a weapon. Give him the ball, figure it out. And I would have liked him to I would have liked to see him used very similarly to how KC was used last year in terms of like, hey, get him in the backfield, give him the ball, you know, just figure out different ways to give him the ball type of deal. A little disappointed that we didn't, but you know, um with the retooled receiver room and, and all that we talked about. It's it's it was an inevitability a little bit that he was going to get buried. And, and that's why when we talked about him to start off the spring, one thing that you and I both said was find a way to get him on the field. Even if it's not a wide receiver, find somewhere where you can get him on the field. It just didn't work out that way. So, you know, we wish Julian the best uh, wherever he goes, so long as he doesn't join one particular former Wolfpacker named Jakeen Harris. Uh, we're, we're happy for him. Julian Gray here, like I mentioned, it's not exactly coming as a surprise. And all of this newfound wide receiver depth, this is unfortunately a product of that. And this type of thing happened, and especially this time of year. And I think you hit the nail on the head here. Just needed to find a way to get him the ball into open space, wind him up, and then let him go. Yeah. And you saw several times last year where he was so close, so close to catching it and then taking it to the house. And he, he was also very valuable as a kickoff returner as well but i want to be careful in how i'm saying this in a silver lining type of way i'm almost looking at this as a good thing and the reason i say that is because that means all of the depth all these portal guys they are who we need them to be that means that the depth is depthing the talent is talented and that is a good thing for nc state the unfortunate negative side of this is you lose a guy like julian gray who a lot of us thought very highly of. We wanted him to succeed. We saw the writing on the wall where he could be a guy that becomes electric. You mentioned sort of similar ways to KC. Julian Gray is the fastest guy on the team. And so if you did find ways to get him the ball, perhaps you could have found similar production. So it's a tad bit frustrating to see it end like this. However, I think more than anything, the silver lining is that all of this depth now at wide receiver position is so deep that you unfortunately lose a guy like this. That means the program is progressing. We're getting somewhere. The talent is getting better and better and better, and that will translate to more wins. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, the, the like I said, it, it seems like more of a personal thing for me because I was so much so rooting for Julian. He, right. He's just one of those guys. It's just, it's for me. It, there's primetime TV guys, right? The guys that like when they're on. 
for example, whenever there was a kickoff or a, a punt being sent to NC State, there was a chance Julian Gray was going to be back there. And if there was a chance he was going to be back there, there was a chance he was going to be running in front of everybody very soon. And, and so, you know, you would hope that that production kind of pops out on offense, but it just never quite fit. I always thought he was more of a slot receiver than an outside guy, but he was playing a ton outside. And I just I, – I couldn't make a ton of sense of it because I thought to myself, if you get him in the slot where he gets free releases, where he's generally going up against guys that are quicker than fast, where you have a situation where he could end up matched up on a linebacker or a safety, he will dominate those matchups. It just didn't work out that way, you know. So, again, like you said, I look at this as a sign and as a symbol that, hey, the the guys who are new here, they're everything that they're uh, touted to be, and, and that's kind of why this is happening. Um, but, you know, he, the young man has two years of eligibility left. I'm sure he didn't want to. And, and the craziest part about all of the talent we bought in in the transfer portal, just let's just go down the list here for a second. How many years of eligibility does Noah Rogers have left? He's got four. Wesley Grimes. I think he has two. Jolie. Two. And everybody in the recruiting class has a solid four. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get it. I get it. You know, like it, if you're not the guy yet, it's hard for you to overtake these guys when you have less time than them ahead of you. Yeah, and that's exactly what I was about to get at. You feel really good about KC, Noah Rogers, Takari Collins, Wesley Grimes, and Justin Jolie. I'd be surprised if that's not your top five pass catchers right there uh, coming into this season. And that's not even touching on the freshmen that could make impacts. You're looking at Paylor, Anderson, and maybe even some Keenan Jackson as well. So that's eight names that you think could make an impact this year. And then you think about Julian Gray. So Julian Gray will probably find a better fit for himself elsewhere and we wish him nothing but the best that kind of leads me to two questions here to end on this subject in particular do you think state will target another wide receiver in the portal slash do you think we'll see any more names wide receiver wise jump in the portal i don't think we target anybody else in the portal, but i could see somebody else who jumped in the the group that we got is so good i forgot paylor isn't even on campus yet right exactly <laughs> Every time I think about Paylor, I get to think of things and salivate, no diddy. But that man is, oh, my God. Oh, my God. When you think about him, when you, you know, the last time I saw Paylor and and the clip of him, he was walking some kid down in high school, and he's just relaxed and laughing, and that kid is straining for his dear life to keep up. Oh, oh, man. I, I don't think that they go into the portal and get more receivers because, again, I think that receiver, the receiving room is extremely young. And yeah. extremely talented, and so I don't think that there's a, a big need to go get uh, more guys that are ready made right now. Is I think we have a few that are ready made to rock at the moment. Where I could see us potentially getting somebody's either linebacker, maybe right. defensive line, maybe you know we bring a defensive lineman back who may have left and wants to come home again. You know, you may be number zero in their book, but you're never zero in our heart, big okay. fella. Uh, but just saying, just saying. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of the second part of the silver lining I had mentioned is this now opens up a spot if you do want to go get a defensive lineman or maybe another right. linebacker. That's just another spot you can utilize to do that. So Julian Gray will be hitting the transfer portal. We certainly wish him all the best unless we see him in the next couple of years because otherwise, sorry, brother, you knew what it was when you signed up. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up next, we're talking about Indiana State Guard Ryan Conwell's visit to Raleigh over this past weekend and something to keep an eye out for moving forward after a quick word from our sponsors. Our first sponsor of the day is LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are just right for that role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals that you simply cannot find anywhere else. In any given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses can get a qualified candidate within just 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats 
that they simply might not have the time or resources to effectively hire. So LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make this process easier. They've even just launched a feature that helps you write job descriptions, just completely streamlining the whole entire process. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Check out Locked On's NFL Mock Draft live on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. This streams on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 channel on YouTube or for free on Amazon Fire TV channel's app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise. This includes live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. Locked On's NFL Mock Draft is live on April 17th at 7 p.m., streaming on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel's app. Middle portion of our Monday show, now getting into the basketball side of Wolfpack's transfer portal expeditions. Indiana State Guard Ryan Conwell took his visit to Raleigh over the weekend. Reports all seem to say that it went very well, although most visits sound all the same after the fact. It went very well. He enjoyed his visit. He toured the campus. He met the coaches. We all know how that goes. So the question is, what's the probability that we're landing this guy? For many of us, two of us included, this seems to be the guy for NC State. If we're looking for a home run addition, Ryan Conwell seems to be the guy. Now, it sounds like the other three schools competing for his services would be Indiana, where he's from, Mm -hmm. Purdue, also where he's from, also just played the national championship, and he'd be a legacy player at Purdue, slash Xavier. They're in the Big East. Another regional school of relevance, I would say. So for NC State to get first swing at this type of thing, this was Conwell's first visit was to NC State. I certainly like that part of it, but this is starting to feel a bit more difficult than maybe we would have anticipated. Let me tell you something, okay? One of Indiana's uh, delicacies, one of the foods that they make up there that's like really big time is fried steak like it's like a hamburger type deal but it's like it looks like a fried map come on out of there come on right come on <laughs> come on we got cookout down here brother we got bojangles bojangles hear me out hear me out okay old time good, barbecue baby. old time barbecue is right there man old time barbecue right there. all i'm saying is this okay we got sammy's wings you don't you don't need to be up there in indiana no more eating that struggle food you don't need to be up there no more man Come on down here. Come on down here, okay? Listen, listen. Indiana, it's a nice state. It's a fine state. It's a, it's a fine state. You know, walking in your dad's footsteps, that'd be wonderful. It'd be great. Create a new legacy for yourself. Create a new legacy for your family. Come on down here, man. Come on down here. You know what else they don't have up there? Howling Cow ice cream. I'm just saying. They're not eating... Five uh, five different scoops of ice cream in five days up there. Come on down here, Mr. Conwell. You know what I mean? Listen, I'm not saying this just because I graduated from the phenomenal North Carolina State University. I'm saying this because I care about you. It's about time you get out of Indiana, okay? It's about time. Well, what's IU got going on over there? They ain't been relevant since Bob Knight was over there. God rest his soul. God rest his soul. You know, Purdue, are they are they trending upward? Trending downward. Just lost the two-time national player of the year. Last time I checked, they're bringing back all conference guards. I'm just saying, you want somewhere where you can not only be a guy, but be the guy, and you don't have to eat fried map? There's an option for you, brother. There's an option. That's all I'm saying. Aside from perhaps ice cream being part of the sales pitch, I would have to think that the the pitch to Conwell being, you know, you can come down here and make your own legacy. You don't have to follow in the footsteps of family members or stay within the home state to accomplish everything that you want to accomplish. You could come to NC State and be the guy. We're looking for a guard that can create for others, can score at all three levels, and just be a dominant force with the ball in his hands. That could be you. We're looking for a guy like you, or potentially you. 
That should be the sales pitch. If this were to come down to NIL purposes, Kenton, where do you think State would stack up against these other three schools? Well, I think if it were to come down to NDA, uh, to NIL purposes, I don't believe that Xavier would have us beat. I just I have a I hard time believing so. that. Yeah. Um, Purdue, however, listen, those they they got they got some good things rolling, but I'm I'm I would say, in terms of especially for basketball NIL, the smart money's on Tom Lavosi and company. I think they can get it done. I think they can get it done if it was strictly a money thing. And and again, just one more time here. Um, this is a real thing that they have uh, going on there. This is this is the fried map thing I was referencing here, um, brother. Come on away from this. Come on away from this. What what is this atrocity? You deserve better. You know, it, it's. I feel like Mario, and you should let me love you. I just don't get it. Do you enjoy being hurt? You know, <laughs> come on down here. Come on down here uh, and, and you know, find yourself at a school that's going to have you play a big-time ball. And, again, you're going to be not just a guy, you'll be the guy right away. And you'll have multiple years to explore that being the guy with a very competent uh, group of players around you, you know, because at Indiana, I feel like you'd be a Maserati amongst a bunch of Movos and, and at Purdue, I mean, who knows if you come out from under some of those guys in the backcourt. Come on where you belong, Ryan. Come on. Yeah, and to be honest, if you're looking at these other three schools, I would have to imagine that NC State has perhaps the most attractive base layer ready to go for next season after you add on a couple things from the portal. I mean, yeah, Purdue, they're losing ED. A couple more guards to the portal. It's kind of uncertain what Purdue may look like. I'm sure they're still going to establish some level of consistency there because you expect them to do so. Indiana as well. I know they recently just added a guard out of the portal. I think they're closely in contention for potentially another one. So you look at Conwell considering Indiana. Yeah, you might not be the guy over there. You might just be another guy that can contribute in some capacity, but not the way that you know that Conwell can. So I truly do think, and maybe as unbiased as I can give it to you, I think NC State would be a phenomenal fit for Conwell. We'd be very lucky to have him, of course. He's our top priority. As I mentioned, if it comes down to NIL, I really only think Indiana could go bar for bar with NC State. I'm not I'm not so confident that Purdue could keep up if it were to come down to that sort of thing. Xavier, respectfully, I don't see it. So, you know, I... I think NC State probably has a lot going in their favor for this. It helps when you go to the Final Four, that's for sure. But this will certainly be a close race. I think, realistically, I think you're looking at Indiana and Purdue. I don't think Xavier will be a major factor. Maybe I'll be surprised by that. But I think it'll come down to Indiana, Purdue, and NC State. And if NC State can land Conwell, that's a big one. That's a big fish in terms of what we need for this coming season. So, We'll certainly keep our eyes peeled for any additional developments on that. We're going to have some more Transfer Portal news for you on Tuesday's show. Be sure to keep an eye out for that. You're going to want to hear what we have to say there. And coming up next, we're getting into baseball's major series win down at Clemson over the weekend after a quick word from our sponsors. Our second sponsor of the day is FanDuel. It's nearly playoff time in the NBA and NHL, and MLB is now in full swing. FanDuel is the place to bet on each and every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. Yes, I said that correctly. $150 win or lose. You can bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. So what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Last couple of minutes here on Monday. Humongous series win for the Pac-9 baseball team over the weekend. Went down to Clemson, who was number two in the country, and took this series in emphatic fashion. They won 11-8 on Friday night, 4-0 on Saturday night, before dropping the third game on Sunday by a score of 7-0. But at that point, the damage had already been done. A little bit of a shaky start from senior starter Sam Heifel on Friday, but the offense, we've been talking about the urgent need for offense to carry the water. They got the job done on Friday night. Alec Makarevich and Garrett Pennington 
continue to carry the load for this offense two of the most dynamic bats in the entire ACC conference. And Shane Van Dam was the hero out of the bullpen on Friday night. Long man in relief. I believe he tallied eight Ks in a long relief stint. Unbelievable effort to take the opening game Friday night from the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, and I think that's a great way to start off a series, right? You always want to start off with a way and set the tone in the right way. And, and you know, Clemson, objectively speaking, one of the best teams in the nation. Coming into this game, everybody was terrified and mortified. Like, oh, my God, you know, not only is this a tough series, but we have struggled on the road so mightily this year. It's been bad. So much. Grayson is, is understating it. This is an affront to the word bad. This has been horrendous, terrible, downright filthy baseball to watch. And lo and behold, you start off this series on the road with an emphatic win. That's what you need to see. Then getting into Saturday, the reemergence, I guess you should say, of Dominic Fritton, affectionately known by us as Rom-Com Dom. He is back. He had no doubt his best start of the year. I believe he went five and two-thirds innings, scoreless baseball, kept Clemson off the board, and gave the rest of the bullpen and the offense enough wiggle room to clinch the series win on Saturday. Kenton, how big is it if Dominic Fritton can return to his freshman year form at this point of the season? Our pint size Noah Syndergaard is one of the best things to ever happen to this pro. No, very seriously though. Um, Dominic Fritton being really good is, is extremely important to this team. We talked about some of the injuries that we saw earlier in the season and the fact that you weren't going to replace some of the guys that we lost early one for one. And with that being said, everybody has to step up. It was already expected that Dom Fritton was going to take another step because there were times last year where he was absolute nails. Remember, he earned the moniker Ron Calm Down because he came into a bases loaded situation and said, uh, oh, one, two, three, go on and sit down. Go on and sit down. Uh, no movement. Nobody's coming home. All three of you stay exactly where you are, you know? And, and so with that in mind, his reemergence is, is going to be vital to this team. And also, it's not just something that Grace and I are talking about in theoreticals. This is something that we're seeing in practice. Look at what this team looks like when Dom is rolling out a high clip, as opposed to when we're like, oh boy, cover your eyes. This that come on, kids. This ain't no damn Dom for we we don't know who this is on the mob, but this ain't our Dom. We see the difference. It's tangible, it's noticeable. He is a special, special talent. And it, when he's got his best stuff rolling, good night down the road for a long flight to the batters. Cause it's uh it's gonna be a tough out for you. Dom Fritton getting back on track could not have come at a better time than it just did. We've talked about the April schedule being a gauntlet. It still is, so there's really no time to celebrate. But yeah. Dom Fritton going on the road and picking up the – and clinching the series win on Saturday night, you cannot overemphasize how big of a performance and a win that is for him. And he has struggled for much of the year. He, he has a little bit of that can't-get-right-itis that we talk so much about the basketball team having. And something I do find is interesting about NC State going down to Clemson and taking this series. If you roll back just one calendar year, Clemson, who was supposed to be a pretty solid team, was struggling right around this point of the year. They came into Raleigh, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe they swept us. And from that point on, the rest of the season, through the rest of April – into May, and into the ACC Tournament Championship, which they won, they caught fire. It seemed like, for whatever reason, that NC State Series win really lit the flame for Clemson last year. This could be the inverse of that this year. NC State going on the road and picking up a series win over the number two team in the country is exactly the type of momentum you have to get rolling here. As I mentioned, there is no time to celebrate. You play Campbell who is one of the most solid midweeks teams that you'll play all year. And then you have good old Dirty Foot Club coming to Raleigh this weekend. They are ranked. They're having a very solid season. NC State certainly has to find a way to build off of this. And despite all the inconsistencies, both sometimes in the offense, sometimes on the mound, and sometimes defensively, if they can just find a way to turn this into something. Some folks subscribe to the hot, cold, hot theory. Perhaps... We are beginning our final hot phase here, and it would be coming at a perfect time to do so because there's still a lot of ball left to play, a lot of wins left to get, and a lot of them are of large importance. So big-time series win over Clemson, 
Another big week coming up this week. Got to keep this thing rolling. I want to know, why can't we play against non-ranked teams? (laughs) Before this game, or I'm sorry, before this series, rather, NC State had a total of 10 road games. Grayson, do you want to venture to guess our road record? I believe it was like one and nine. Two and ten. With six of those losses coming in series against the mighty Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets who swept us with a run rule. And let's just be honest, this ain't the Louisville Cardinal of, of past. Louisville Cardinals 0-3 with a run rule in there as well, I believe. What's going on? Do we need to paint the numbers next to any team that NC State plays on the road. Hey, this is the number five team in the nation. Coach, what are you talking about? They won five games. No, no, that's a that's that's number five team. Uh they're really hard to beat and nobody can beat them but you guys. Because this team, when they're locked in, they can beat anybody. But when they're just kind of messing around out there, when you can just kind of feel it, it just you get that feeling of like, mm, they don't they don't quite seem to be on their best stuff tonight, I'll tell you what, we can get embarrassed by some teams that just leaves you scratching your head going, is this going to keep us out of the tournament coming up here? Because, boy, there's there's work to be done in, in that regard, you know, going forward. So if we could just, you know, if we could take this performance and just drag a little consistency out of it going forward, what a time it'd be. There's a lot of work still to be done, but with series wins over two top 10 teams in the country, like Kenton was kind of alluding to, perhaps you just treat every team like they're a top 10 team in the country. Take that mindset with you and continue to chip away and and continue building your resume. It is officially resume building time of the year for college baseball. So every single win matters. Now, even the midweeks from this point on matter because you got to play ECU again. You got to get them back because they embarrassed us here in Raleigh just a couple weeks ago. But Time to find some momentum for NC State baseball. Hopefully they're on the the upswing after a bit of a rough couple weeks, but a series win over Clemson makes you feel good about the rest of the season to come. That'll do it for us here on Monday. Thank you all so much for joining us. Be sure to hit that like button. Drop your comments in the comment box. Tell us what you think about wide receiver Julian Gray hitting the transfer portal and any potential impact you may feel from that. Tell us what you think about the prospects of landing Indiana State guard Ryan Conwell here with Wolfpack Basketball, or any other names that you feel like are potentially really strong candidates to land here in the red and white. And if you're a big Pac-9 guy, tell us what you thought about NC State's win over number two team Clemson. That'll do it for us here on Monday. We will see you all tomorrow. And until then, go Pack. Go Pack.